Generally, I'm a big believer in playing and enjoying Star Citizen for what it is now, rather than getting too caught up in the dream of what it could be in the future. However, occasionally, I do allow myself a good old-fashioned flight of fancy, and bouncing all over the Milky Way in Starfield has got me thinking about what could be beyond Systems 1 and 2 for Star Citizen. So in this video I'm going to be engaging in some rampant speculation and throwing out my predictions for what could constitute SC's first five systems. Obviously these are just my best guesses, but I figure with a bit of lore and rationale thrown in the mix it could make for an entertaining watch or listen. And of course it can provide some hearty comedic material for you to throw back at me in future years if we're still talking about the upcoming pyro system. So if this sounds good to you, then grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, then let's get into it. So like I said, it's always important to remember where we are right now, and I feel there's a risk that videos like this could oversell the game. So with that in mind, I'm going to kick off with a classic disclaimer just for anyone who hasn't bought into the project yet. Right now SC's entire play area is the Stanton system, with its four planets, Microtech, Artcorp, Hurston and Crusader, their 12 moons, multiple Lagrange points and a giant asteroid belt, the Aaron Halo. Given the ability for seamless traversal from space to any planet or moon's surface in the game, it's already a huge overall play area, but compared to the dream of more than 100 systems, it's obviously far off the scope of the project still. The Stanton system is something of a middle ground in everything from size to security to economic importance. It provides a canvas for CIG to introduce and develop a lot of the game's core systems. The system is just the right level of dangerous for plenty of bounty hunting work, mercenary jobs and of course opportunities for piracy, but also secure and resource rich enough for more industrially minded players to engage in activities like mining, cargo hauling and salvage. We've even got a good few racetracks for those who like nothing better than just going fast. So during this vid I want to take the opportunity to showcase CIG's Arc Star Map, a really awesome map that helps visualise the SC universe which you can find through the main RSI page. I'll also post a link in the video description down below. Part of the inspiration for this video was actually a conversation I was having with a newer backer on Discord who had absolutely no idea that this existed. So while it won't be new to a lot of you, there are always people who are just discovering the game, and I think it's a bit of a shame that really cool assets like this aren't signposted a little bit better. The main transit between systems is going to be through jump gates, and you can see on the star map that the Stanton system here has three. Heading to Magnus, Terra, and of course our next candidate, Pyro. Pyro is going to be the least contentious name on this list, since it's already been very clearly announced by CIG. I'm saying least contentious as opposed to completely uncontentious, because I will of course get a few comments down below from people telling me that no new systems will ever come out, uh, but given the showcase we saw at last year's sitcom, I feel it's a fairly safe bet. Pyro offers a completely different environment to Stanton. So while Stanton's planets have all been sold off to major corporations, the system is still within UEE space. The corps look after their local security, but the UEE navy is on hand to protect the system's inhabitants, and the Stanton system is represented in the UEE's political structure. Pyro, on the other hand, is an unclaimed system, and compared with Stanton, is practically lawless. The system's star emits a huge amount of solar flares, leaving all of the system's six planets fairly desolate. Since the system was originally talked about, there's been a little bit of retconning on the go, with the lore team dialing back on just how desolate the system is, since a completely barren system would probably not be amicable to creating good gameplay opportunities. However, while Pyro 3 was considered as a terraforming candidate, none of the corporations who passed through developed it any further. So while we'll likely find some outposts and settlements on the surface, we should probably expect hostile environments everywhere we go. Despite all of this, or maybe more accurately because of it, Pyro is home to many outlaw groups who use it as a hiding place from which to strike into UEE space. 
Ruin Station, a terraforming platform built by Gold Horizon in orbit around Pyro 3, is the main hub, and is constantly being jostled over by various factions that occupy the system. The current top dogs are Xenothreat, who've already featured in one of the dynamic events, but other gangs such as the Fire Rats or the Overlords have a presence as well. Ruin Station will almost certainly provide a place for criminal players to offload stolen merchandise or pick up contraband to smuggle to more civilised systems for a tidy profit, but any law-abiding players passing through the system or looking to gather resources here should probably give it a wider berth. As well as providing more interesting gameplay options for those interested in a less secure environment, Pyro should also introduce a greater scale and set of challenges than we've experienced in Stanton so far. At 13 AU, Pyro is nearly three times larger than Stanton, which measures 5 AU. On top of this, the system is comparatively sparsely populated, with far less in terms of economic development and infrastructure. So those venturing out will probably need to plan and prepare far more diligently. In many ways, this reveals why new star systems are so important for the game's progression. Because we have a number of game systems, like refueling and limited repairing, available right now that are just barely utilised because of just how comparatively easy life in Stanton is. With an abundance of Lagrange points and outposts on moons and planets, as well as the major landing zones, it's pretty hard to run out of fuel or find yourself needing to patch up your ship by hand. However, when we push out into Pyro, that's liable to change. You just might need to dust off that staff error and learn some of the mechanics ahead of time. But after Pyro, we're really entering the world of speculation. It might be somewhat questionably educated speculation, but nothing I'm going to suppose has been confirmed by CIG 100%. One part of my logic though is that the systems will likely be linked to one another by the jump paths shown on the Ark star map. It's not that the jump points couldn't just be repurposed and gone back over in the future, I just feel it's more likely that CIG would work to expand out a cluster of systems that are actually meant to be linked together, just to save work on the future. So from Pyro, we can go to Hadrian, Castra, and Oso, but the second least contentious name on the list jumps out, Nyx. And the main reason that Nyx jumps out is because it's categorically an easy win. The biggest part of the work has already been done in the form of Delamar and Levski. Before the planet Crusader was properly physicalised and the Orison landing zone added in patch 314, the giant moon-sized asteroid Delamar and its major landing zone Levski were actually present in the Stanton system. They were then removed due to performance concerns, and I for one am pretty desperate to see them again, because Levski was one of my favourite locations in the game. Nyx is an unclaimed zero-sex system like Pyro, but rather than outlaw gangs, its major hub Levski is home to political dissidents and refugees who sought to escape the UEE during the Messer era. While trying to keep the focus on the systems, this video might not be the best place to dive into other lore aspects like the Messers. Do let me know down in the comments if you've been keen on more lore-oriented videos though. But for now, let's just say the Messers were a somewhat more dictatory element of the UEE's history. Otherwise, Nyx is pretty location light, with only three planets, none of which are populated. Nyx-1 is a coreless planet already mined clean by a gold horizon. Nyx-2 has a high-pressure atmosphere of carbon dioxide with acidic clouds that make it pointless terraforming, and Nyx-3 is an ice giant devoid of atmosphere or valuable minerals. There are options to develop further interesting gameplay opportunities and assets though, with Nyx's Glacium Ring noted to be home to a series of other small asteroid settlements and bases. The route through Nyx from Stanton to Castra is a particularly important trade lane, so while the UEE has no claim on the system, there's plenty of room to create missions for players to hunt down pirates. Or, you know, to do the pirating, of course. Nyx can fit neatly on from Pyro with its jump point to the system. But it also has the benefit of acting as a crossroads to further system development, opening gates up to Bremen, Castra, Odin, Toehill, and Virgil. However, for my guess, for the next system, we'd need to go all the way back to Stanton. And from there, we can head through the jump gate to Magnus. Magnus is a relatively sparse system with just three planets, one of which, Magnus II, or Borea, was a terraforming candidate. Envisioned as a UE military base and shipbuilding facility, the system suffered a notable decline, initially due to budget cutbacks and then a series of solar flares that interrupted the terraforming process and left it as a decaying world. 
However, with the UEE's withdrawal from Boria, a more frontier culture has thrived. And I personally think Magnus as a system could provide an interesting point on the security scale. More dangerous than Stanton, without going as far as the zero sex systems like Pyro and Nyx. There's also the attraction of Drake into Planetary, who've moved their headquarters to Boria. We've already got one example of ship manufacturers influencing planets and cities in the forms of Crusader. But after all that clean living at Orison, I for one would love to go for a walk around Drake Town. And this is one of the ways that I think that as we move further along in the project, we'll hopefully start to see development speed of new systems ramp up. A lot of what's holding CIG back from new systems now is actually the tech hurdles, the things like server meshing and how we actually transition between systems. But after that, the actual rollout of planets and new systems should increase in speed. And CIG don't have to reinvent the wheel every time with each new system. The frontier nature of Magnus should lend itself well to reusing some of the frontier outpost settlements that the team have already created with Pyro in mind. And if they throw in some of the assets that they've developed for the Drake line of ships, then they could make it varied enough while still being able to build out locations fairly quickly. On the other end of the scale, at some point in order to establish game systems properly, SC is going to need a high security core system. Somewhere for newer players, or those who want less PvP risk in their average session, to enjoy a more sheltered experience. And while the Soul system might represent the highest of high sec, I think given the enormity of developing our own solar system, it's likely a task that CIG would leave until much later in the project. The Terror system, however, could offer a suitable alternative, and conveniently you'll find jump gates to Terror from Magnus, Pyro and Stanton. Terror 3, commonly just called Terror, is a natural super-Earth, and it's probably the second most important planet in the UEE, although it is vying with Earth for that top slot. The planet's capital Prime is cited as the ultimate in environmental design, reflecting the greater care the citizens of Terra take over their world than those of Earth did. And there are some notes that the southern continent of Terra is home to ancient ruins from a lost civilization. This could be a really interesting area to develop exploration gameplay. Terra 4, or Gen, is also a terraformed super-Earth, giving the system two major hub planets, while Aero, Terra 1, and Pike, Terra 2, are uninhabitable but rich in natural resources. Pike is the home to major mining operations, while Aero's more dangerous atmosphere has made it less appealing to the large corps, potentially leaving space for enterprising players though. As well as its planets, the system has a major advantage as the home to multiple stable jump points making it a crucially important economic hub in the game lore. And as much as I think it's important to develop a major core system from the perspective of security, I also think it's about properly developing and testing the game's economy. Adding a major hub, providing a significant source of demand, would help in driving proper economic activity. So while developing a major system like Terra would be a huge undertaking for CIG, I think for these reasons it would make a logical fifth to add to this cluster. However, there were a number of other contenders I considered when making my predictions, which you might think more likely. We've got Ellis, which, with the build-out of its green planet for Arena Commander's racing module, could be a contender. However, while it would be cool to see the Murray Cup occurring within the PU, with a massive 13 planets, it could be a bit too much to bite off. Kiel could also make the list, as the official home of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, Severus, the only one of Kiel's system's six planets to be terraformed, is the IAE's main location. in law events such as the one that we see in Stanton are just the satellite events. Odin is the primary location for Squadron 42. Until we see that, it's obviously going to be behind closed doors, but hopefully the first chapter of Squadron should be in our hands by the time we get to five systems, at which point it might make sense to just capitalise on the work that's already been done. And Kastra is a heavily militarised system on the UEE's borders with the Xi'an Empire that follows on from some of the other systems on this list. With its two planets, it could be a much easier nut to crack than Terra while still offering a high security alternative due to the military presence. However, personally, I reckon introducing a system with serious economic clout is equally as important as delivering high sec. So that's it for my predictions for the first five or the next four systems. And like I said a few times, I'm well aware that it's rampant speculation, but hopefully you agree, given that you're here at the end still, that sometimes a bit of rampant speculation can be quite fun and entertaining, 
particularly when we're in a bit of a quieter period for the game. Think I did a good job? Then don't forget to hit the like button and maybe subscribe for more vids. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Like I said, do let me know if you're interested in a bit more lore-based content. It's something I've always been interested in, and I think the lore team have done a fantastic job of putting so much info out there for us. If you are interested to learn more about any of the systems I mentioned, or indeed many others, then I can highly recommend the Lawmakers Guide series, in which a member of the team goes into much more detail than I was able to in this video. They do have a slight advantage in that they're the ones who wrote it, of course. But with all that said, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.